Recently, there's been a number of news reports about monoliths mysteriously appearing in the middle of deserts or high atop far-reaching mountaintops. Today's episode, I got a real good tip that there happens to be a monolith in my vicinity. I am going in search of that monolith. dad taking me and my kid brother to a movie years ago that had a monolith mysteriously showing up at different times and locations. The word monolith derives from Latin monolithus or Greek monolithos meaning one or single, with lithos, meaning stone. Monoliths can be natural geological features, such as single, massive stones, or even mountains. It can also be something man-made. There are many monoliths around the world. Some include monumental monoliths, such as Stonehenge or the Great Pyramid of Giza. They can be runes, they can be standing stones or obelisks, just to name a few. I received a message from my friend Dave Bowman. He monitors earthly monolithic phenomenon from his Stargate Upper Atmospheric Space Station. Dave let me know that there has been activity in the region that I preside and research in. I thought this would be great because since I live near the 49th parallel, this could be the ideal spot for something like a monolith to be supplanted. I have learned in my enigmatic pursuits, there's no quick or easy path. So let's venture into the hinterland and see if we can find a monolith. Today I will rely on my GPS or Gonzo Pathway Systemizer. I feel fortunate that a monolith may be in such a convenient location, for I have been to Peru, Spain, and Llano County, Texas, in search of a monolith, but to no avail. I was given a set of directions that first led me to a parking lot, so I thought I'd ramp up the investigation and go there. The location was mysterious and totally abandoned. Nobody was there. But what I did see was a monolith. But there's something about it. It didn't seem like a real one. It was numbered. It was labeled. And it just didn't seem natural. So I decided to follow step two. I followed the next direction to 11 miles due north of my location where I was suddenly in the middle of the woods. And at this point, I knew there was going to be quite a trek a number of miles deep into the forest. As I made my way through the forest, 
I saw something in the distance that appeared to be maybe a monolith. When I got closer to it, I walked up, took a closer investigation of it. it was just a caveman and a block of ice. I continued into the woods deeper and deeper and deeper. coordinates indicated that I would come up upon this ritual hut that was built here in the woods and they said stay left and at about 33 steps or so you should see it on the right. bit closer and looked in the distance. There it was. In all my excitement, I kept moving closer and closer. Must be it. That's not a monolith. That's a stereolith. I was really excited about what I discovered. The world's first stereolith. But sadly, it disappeared before my eyes. to say that I found the location of the so-called monolith, which I was very excited about. But what I'm even more excited about is I discovered the world's first stereolith. thing I realized is whether it be a monolith or a stereolith, it can appear any time and any place. Everything. 
Seventeen.